All right, cheers to the vinyl community. It's been a minute to YouTube cruiser, realmers, whatever it is. Whatever, whatever scene you're a part of, coming out for a little bit. All right. So I got some. I've been just getting a bunch of CDs of stuff that I already have on vinyl because I already have a lot of stuff on CD and uh, stuff that I had on CD back in the day that for some whatever reason I don't have. I've been trying. It's the shading tier is weird. So whatever you know what I mean. Um, super bright today, but. So like no effects, SM Airlines, have it on vinyl. I had it on CD back in the day. I go to look in my fucking rack, gone. Now there's moving around a lot. Like back in 2008, I moved five times from 2008 to 2010. So moving a lot. And then, uh, and then moving across, you know, halfway across the country. And then, uh, you know, I'll tell you a personal story one time. This girlfriend of mine at the time, an amazing girlfriend, and, uh, you know, I don't want to say anything negative about her, but we were in a verbal, you know, debate, a loud one, and um, she knew, you know, she knew, you know, this is kind of crooked back here, so get to me, my dog's looking at it right now, like, so, she knew music was personal, our passion of mine, and, uh, even one time I was holding the SG and she fastballed a DVD at it and it got a little chunk out of it. Not a big one, but a little ding, a little ding. So be it. Um, but this time she went for the CD collection, which I had a nice library. You know what I mean? But it wasn't like in the wall shelves. It wasn't like those custom shelves like Mazzy has. It was the low budget shelves, the ones, the rack. But they were lined up. I think it was a three rack and then a two rack. So not a crazy amount, but like a couple hundred CDs and cases. Nice. No scratches, because I don't loan my CDs out. I'm that asshole. But I, I, I still have the CD you loaned me from 15 years ago, so thank you. It's in good condition, by the way. Um, but, uh, yeah, no scratches. And she just tipped the whole library on its forward. And then she started doing the Irish dance on it or whatever. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And, and so I, I like, pick her up while she's like, you know what I mean? So I'm like, please, no, yeah. And while I'm, I had to step on some to pick her up off, you know, to, to try. And you know what I mean? Luckily, it ended, you know what I mean, where we, 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 uh, we were fine later on in the day. But my CDs weren't. So I, most of them so crazy. The cases are pretty, whoever invented the CD case, the old plastic one, did a good job. Most of them held up, like nine, like ninety-five percent of the collection or whatever. You know, might be off on that one a little bit, but most of them survived. But there was a good amount where it was like the CD got cracked itself. So those I just threw away completely. There was, I should have wrote down which ones I was throwing away, but in the heat, you know, after some shit goes down like that, you don't really give a shit. So now you, you know, hear a little personal story. I, anyone else have that happen where you, you know, had the, the, the passionate girlfriend go for your passionate stuff? Anyways, um, or she went for the records. I, you know, I've heard some stories, um, like, uh, all right, a while, I think I mentioned this in one of a previous episode where I got a handful of records from this guy's collection because he cheated on his wife and, uh, they're going through the divorce, and she had this record collection. And she was like, she, her son-in-law, who I knew, my it was my friend's girlfriend's parents. The mom was like, tell Ty he can come grab whatever he wants from this dude's collection. And man, there was some fucking holy grails in there. Sometimes I look back, and I'm like, me should have fucking grabbed every holy grail. But as respect to another record collector, man, I, so I, I literally, I took like an Aussie, Blizzard of Oz, I didn't have that. And like a, a Hendrix. I took like maybe five records that weren't even holy grail. Just ones I knew I didn't have in my collection to fill in the gaps. But I wasn't trying to. But I could have gone to town. And it was a fucking lot. Like a whole wall ceiling. You know what I mean? A good couple thousand records. But uh. You know what I mean? It was one of those things I just. I remember seeing. Uh, there was like Pink Floyd's first album. There was this like. Um. 
Rolling Stone stuff I knew that, but I wasn't really into, you know what I mean? Just stuff I knew was probably worth some coin. Whatever. But my point is, she was trying to sacrifice his babies. <laughs> and, you know, whether he deserves that or not, uh, you know, that's up to me. But, uh, so all that. So then, it's gonna be, now that like, the sun's going through some clouds. So, there's drama in the vinyl community. I've been seeing all the fucking MoFi Fidelity drama. It's fucking hysterical. Um, it just, I just think, I'm not laughing. I don't want, if you've got, if you feel they wronged you, I'm not laughing at you. That's fucked up. I just think, like, it was crazy, the reaction of all this. Now, I did a video talking about my one step. I couldn't find the exact video out of the fucking shit ton of the videos I put out there. But the one step I got a Steve Ray Vaughn, I noticed right when I did a shootout with the original old pressing, the dynamics from the guitar were taken away. You, just, you could really hear it on Tin Pan Alley. When he goes to quiet, by not turning his guitar down, he's just picking lighter. And then when he picks harder, it gets louder. Now you can still hear this, obviously, on the one step, but there's 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 something in the dynamics you're missing a lot. Like when he hits the strings really hard, they naturally distort more than the than his overdrive, than his tube screamer and his amp are doing. He's hitting the strings so hard that they're distorting on the impact combined with everything else. And that overdrive that he's getting naturally is taken away from the one step. Now, I didn't hear that and be like, oh, this must be digital. I just didn't think it sounded as warm or as clean as the original. And then for the price, I really, you know, it's just debatable. Now, the vocals and the drums and the bass definitely sounded cleaner than the original. And, the less, and less surface noise. So, it balanced out in a way as far as it, they took a little away from the guitar dynamics not a bunch. Now, the average person is probably not going to hear this, but any guitar players that listen to the original and that, you'll definitely hear it. My friend Sean Howard, who may, who plays guitar, he play, plays a lot of acoustic, but he could hear it also very strongly. So anyways, so fast forward to now that, you know, it comes out that these are digital or they, they, they have some digital process. You know what I mean? Let's see if I can even close these even more. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. I... My whole thing was, if you already liked the way it sounded, it, you know what I mean, it's not too, that shouldn't have been too troublesome. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to break it over here. So, as long as you like the way they sound, that's the main thing I would, who gives a shit. Now, promoting, now, when you want to buy something, you want to know what you're buying, That that's important. But it's, if you already bought stuff and you've been enjoying listening to them, I want to you know, go throw your collection in the garbage just yet. But uh, but I thought it was interesting how as soon as this came out, Chad Kasim from the other company was like posting video after video of like, yeah, ours are legit. <laughs> I don't know if that was just coincidence. But um, he's like, yeah, again, you know, let's, you know, when we go over here, it's the real deal, you know. Again, did I point that out? <laughs> Either way, I could, you know, who knows. <laughs> But, um, so in like one of the mobile fidelities I have, I only have a handful. But all the ones I have a few, three dire straights, I have, and I have this Rycooter, which I actually got from the Ian Groove, which he recommended, recommends these all the time. So it's kind of, you know, ironic in the end, he's the one who rats them out when he was promoting them. Uh, but the Rycooter sounds really good. And so do the dire straights. So those. I feel sound better than the originals. So, who, you know, I mean, as long as you're having fun, that's all that fucking matters. But if it's become a competition, then you've already lost. So, either way, I, you know, I mean, I love vinyl. What's crazy, I've been going, nothing has come out for me that I'm like, oh shit. Literally, like, there's a lot of stuff I still need, but that I'm going to pick up little by little. So, like, at the last record store day, I think I mentioned, I was able to, I didn't go the day, but a, couple, a few days later, I had one copy left, and I really wanted to get this, because I had this on CD back when I was, a, back in me high school days, and, um, sounds really good. I feel they went a little cheap on the quality, craft, because they do so, I feel like they went a little cheap on the punk, but me, you know, it's kind of punk rock, but 
I feel like they could have. Well, record seemed a little cheapy. And it would be, I, you know, the color was cool. I, I thought it would have been cool just to do it on a nice fucking 180 gram. Just fucking treat it like it's a fucking rare jazz album. No? All right. So, this is already going too long. That's how my videos roll. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. You know, everything that goes on in the world just gets magnified by your cell phone. So I went, I don't even use, I've been trying to even use my cell phone for an alarm clock unless I have to, but I have an alarm, an actual old school clock by my bed now, so just shut the phone off completely. Well, you know, get the phone away from your fucking bed, I feel like, so you don't wake up and grab it this first thing. Hey, it still happens to me sometimes, but either way, you know, stay positive. And, uh, but I always, I also find, um, politics math, science, I find all that shit interesting, so I enjoy reading about it and watching about it, you know what I mean, but I don't enjoy arguing about it, and I'm not really, I don't really have any, I don't, I'm a person like, whatever's the best solution, I don't care who came up with the idea, what side it is, just what, you know, should be obvious what, you know, well, I shouldn't say it should be obvious, but whatever's the best for the future of the younger generation, that's what I'm all about. i would read sometime... I remember hearing a long time ago that the Indians, and then some of the Native Americans, uh, they were big on making decisions just based on, like, how is this going to affect the future generation. That was, like, the first, you know, go off of that to make our decisions and everything else. So, you know, who knows? Uh, again. But, uh, yeah, so some CDs I got. I'm playing this in the background. Megadeth. He sells with who's buying. Have this on vinyl. Original. Well, it's not a reissue. It's one I got a long time ago that I feel like was a reissue from like the late 90s or something. So anyways, wanted to get it on CD because I'm pretty sure I might have had this. But this is this remastered version. Now what I don't like is he changed the colors of the CDs. Sorry, we're getting garbage on my vinyl. He changed the colors on the CD itself. And uh, it's a remix and a remaster. Which, man, I really just want the original one. Because the original one, the drums almost sounded electric. Because the way it was mixed, it was just... I don't really like it when they do a remix. Just because it, if it's an album that I really listened to a lot when I was younger. Because that's the version I heard. Like, I got the um, In Utero, Nirvana... The twenty, the the mix that they they were saying that Nirvana originally wanted. It's a great mix, but I heard the one that the label wanted, the one that came out back in the day. That's the one I listened to the most. So that one I still enjoy that mix better than the twenty thirteen mix or whatever it's called. There was a couple. There's some songs where it's a bit for me where it's debatable. Where I probably enjoy the other mix a little, a little bit better, but overall, I like the original one. So. But he did a great job of not overmixing it, and it, he kept a lot of the uh, kept the original tone and all that. So he did a great job. But I still, and anyone have that where you you want the CD that look, you know the CD that you originally remember the capital C you remember seeing that was like more plain silver I just think with just the Megadeth and the name of the record and the songs. But um, but what's cool. I noticed the ridge is different, but I think if you get all these remasters, they all do the fucking, this dude's skull. So, you almost got me there, Dave Mustaine. Is, you know, I'm not going to try to get them all for that damn picture, but I'm sure there's some that are going to do that. So, whatever. So, I had a copy of this already, but I didn't have the case anymore, and the CD was beat to shit. So, this is a reissue. But it's cool, they didn't change. This is a remaster, they kept it the same, the CD looks the same. Still comes with a poster lyrics that was totally a pain in the ass to fold back the original way. And, uh, man, this album was a game changer when it came out. My stepdad loved the shit out of this album. Kind of became a dark album later on in life because my stepdad ended up dying of an overdose. But, uh, he was an awesome person. But, he, the, the lyrics to this, even when I was a kid, he would point out this album is heavily, you know, about you know, drugs and stuff, but, uh, but it was a killer record, the songs, and what's, 
Interestingly, some of the darkest songs on here, you read the lyrics, who wrote them? Jerry Cantrell wrote them. So not all the dark ones were written by Lane Staley, who seemed like, you know, the one who was going through the most drama, seems like, obviously. Uh, I shouldn't say going through the drama, but just dealing with the, the one who had the addiction problem with the, the heavy drugs, which ultimately took its toll. Yeah, but uh, this album still kicks ass. I mean, it, I feel like, man, it was, uh, what's crazy, this album was quite a bit different than the first album. The first album, man, it's hard to say which one I like better. It really depends on what I'm feeling like. If I had to pick one, though, I probably would pick the first album facelift but thankfully I don't have to do that but dirt gosh damn the recording quality was a little bit different they both were great recording quality but the tone to the guitar was a little bit thicker uh, like filter his voice seemed to do the experiment it seemed a little bit more with uh, trying to get his voice the way however they were, whatever microphone they're using for his voice in the studio and stuff like that so overall this album had a really different tone and sound and what's crazy, they were able to, I mean, Jar of Flies is totally like acoustic album, so it, it was cool that they did that. I like how their albums had a, a, just a different sound. And then the Three-Legged Dog album, that one, tone-wise, sounded a little bit like Dirt, but then again, different. So, either way, super awesome. Glad I got a, another, a good copy of this. I've been able to go through this views section and find some pretty cool stuff. Um... I got like Helmet's Greatest Hits, which I'm like, did they, I thought they only put out like two albums, but apparently, actually I have another album, I have three of the records, and I just started listening to this one that came out in 2007 that I got a long time ago, it's a really good album, you just have to not expect Mean Time and Betty, and then final CD I'll show real quick, I got this, I already have this on vinyl, me and my, my cousin, my friends used to listen to this shit like crazy in high school because it was like you would go to Megadeth as far as guitar nerd you would go Metallica you would learn Metallica you would learn Megadeth and you would get to Slayer and then you would finally and you would get to uh, Sepultura and this album was just mind boggling to us and uh, so we learned you know quite a you know learned a handful of songs on this on guitar back in the day and I used to have a copy of this one and I'm pretty sure this is one of the ones that got munched somehow or it got lost so either way and uh this is the remaster version. It sounds, to me, I couldn't hear really a difference. There probably is, but they did a good job of still keeping the old school sound. And they kept the CD looking the same. And, uh, yes. So. What is that called? Uh, you know, I like... Is there a term for it? Like, you know... Uh, just having the original shit you had back in the day, you want it to be the same. All right, so that's all for today. So yeah, so Mo5, I don't really give a shit. You, you should have put what you were selling in the first place. You probably, uh, you know, learn your lesson there. It seems like, damn, the vinyl community was fucking out with their pitchforks. It was... <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know. I haven't watched... I've watched some of the videos. And at first when I seen them, I was like, what the fuck's going on? You're like, what's... What is the drama here? And then I was like, I wouldn't... It, you know, kind of is a big deal, but... Well, I mean, in the scheme of things, it's not. But in in the sales vinyl world, it, it is. So, it, but it, did it detour me from some one steps in the future coming out? Like, I was thinking about, I don't know if I already came out that Miles Davis, the Bitches Brew one, and I'm like, that really didn't help them as far as I feel like, if you're on the fence of maybe buying some more, like, yeah, maybe I'll kick back. But, either way, do what makes you happy and all that good shit. So anyway, stay positive. Play lots of vinyl. Play lots of fucking CDs. Just play music. I don't give a fuck how you do it. But as long as you're having fun and you're not in competition mode. But, if you're in like a fun competition mode with your homie or your, you know, I mean, that's fun. I don't give a shit if that you're like, hey man, I finally got that one album that we, you know, an album that I've been wanting and I know you've both been wanting and you got you get to it first. Of course you might, you know. But the cool thing is, a homie, you might, you know, kind of rub it in their face a little bit that you got it, but you're also the one who's going to invite them fucking over and listen to it, and you know what I mean? If you're real close, you just let them fucking borrow it and take it home and spin it also, because you know they would take care of it. So realistically, that's the kind of shit you're into, and that's awesome. That's a fun, and there are, I'm 
I mean, I guarantee that's happening with the cool people in the VC and the and the and, oh yeah, and the uncle people or whatever you are. I don't I don't know you yet. <coughs> it's a good thing, maybe. Man, and the, you know, that goes both ways. And you're like fucking out of here, uncle dumbass. I don't fucking know you, so <laughs> touche. But all that good shit. You know, so yeah, I just ramble on about competition right now for an extra minute. Later, guys. See you next time. Bye.